hands. Can we just sing this part? I will run for greatest things. Things that are power like the power of Jesus. The flames of rich, the hell of green. There's no power like the power of Jesus.
God, that you are a perfect father in the moments that we need a father, that your love is unrelenting, that, that you have a plan for us, God, and that we can look to you today, God, as our, our father in heaven, that in moments we need the embrace of God, that you're there to wrap your arms of love around us, Lord Jesus. And I pray that every person would experience that today, the embrace of a, a father that loves us. God, sometimes we just need to spend some time with Dad. Sometimes we just we just need to, to be in that place in that moment where we're, we're reminded, God, that you love us, God. You're madly in love with every person in this room. And for us to just experience time with you changes everything. And we pray that that would be the case today, that time with you, God, it's something, something happens inside of us when we spend some time with our Heavenly Father. We're reminded we're loved. We're, we're, we're reminded of our purpose. And that transforms the way we live our lives. And that's what we want today. We want to encounter you in such a way that it produces transformation in us. So God, would you transform us? Would you work through uh, in this service, God, that, that we don't want to go through motions. We want to encounter you, God, in a way that transforms us in day-to-day -day life. Would you do that today, God? 
As the Bible's taught, Lord Jesus, as we learn today, God, about how we can live lives of virtue. And, and, and Lord Jesus, reclaim some forgotten virtues that, that, that you would help through the Holy Spirit, God, to minister your word in a way that, that's life transforming to us, God. We just pray that the Bible would be alive to us today and bring some transformation to us in the way we live out our lives. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. would you just join me together? Let's put our hands together and celebrate a dad that loves us, a dad that's committed to us, is on our side. So good, so good. All right, well, you guys can uh, uh, be seated. And today we're actually taking some time in service to, to honor veterans, and, and we want to we want to do that today, and, and I want to show you this video as we honor veterans, and after that, we just want to honor those of you that, that have served this country uh, as we remember veterans uh, um, earlier this week and this weekend, so let's roll that video. to ask at this time, anybody that served us and any, any of the military armed forces and you served this, served this nation, your veterans, would you just stand at this time? Any veterans in the house today? We just want to honor you and thank you for serving, man. Come on. We just honor you today and we thank you for serving us. Amen say a word of prayer together. God, we just thank you for this group of veterans amongst us today that are heroes amongst us. And every time we come to a, a national holiday like this, God, we just, uh, we just want to pray and intercede for this nation, God. That we just continue to ask, God, that you will um, work mightily through the Holy Spirit in America today, God, and you raise up the church and Lord Jesus, we pray for a national repentance. We pray for a national coming back to you, Jesus, as we intercede for this land and believe for the healing of our country today. And we thank you, God, for, for veterans today and all that they represent. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Well, hey, I would like to say good morning to everybody. I encourage to everybody. You guys will see those programs on the way in today. Uh, um, you guys enjoying a beautiful day today? Come on. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful day today. I love this time of the year because, you know, any, any, any sports fans in the house? Where's my sports fans out? It's a great time to be a sports fan and, you know, get to enjoy some, some football or basketball if, you, if you're a sports fan. It's that time of the year. And, and, uh, but you know what I love? I love people that, that, that have just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to be in the house of God because I want to score a touchdown for Jesus today. Yeah. And, 
Let's go ahead and touch down for Jesus and, and uh, um, means most. You know, we get our heart right and, and uh, allow God to just, just minister in this moment. So I just encourage everybody to, to fill out that Connect card that's inside that program. And there's a place on your way out. There's a giving station. And you can just drop that in the wood box on your way out. As well as uh, contributions. Thank you so much for continuing to support the ministry of Discovery Community Church. And Discovery is funded based on the uh, faithfulness of members and attenders. And as you and I continue to allow God to use us and make us generous in our giving, we continue to support the ministry of Discovery. Thanks so much in, in advance for, for doing that. I got a couple things I want to celebrate today. Uh, um, you know, last weekend we, we did a a fall festival here at Discovery, and we had somewhere between an estimated 400 and 500 people on our campus. And you know, it's a demonstration of, of a church. You know, we're not a mega church, but we we, we do things that, that have a tremendous impact, like last weekend, and and uh, we do some, some bigger things. And that was a bigger thing last weekend, and the community really responded and came out. So I just want to I just want to celebrate it. We also had 60 families that. That, that filled out connect cards, that they visited, and, and just uh, were a part of that. So anytime there's something cool that, that, that happens, it, it's worthy of celebration, right? Yeah. So I want to celebrate that. We're going to put our hands together in just a moment. But one more thing I want to celebrate that's really cool today, and, and um, I, I thank you for continuing to, to support the, the ministry and the advanced journey together. And you look down and see some, you see some fresh brand new carpet, right? So every time we accomplish something from this side of the board, we get to move it over to this side of the board. And God has really helped us to be able to re-carpet the, the house of God, which is really needed. And, and we get to accomplish that. And the vision continues to go forward, and God continues to help us get some, some projects done that we need to get done. So let's celebrate these things together. So cool. So good. All right. So, hey, I want to um, also just encourage everybody to remember next weekend is our Thanksgiving service. So um, Thanksgiving Sunday for us is going to be a week from today. I just really encourage you to come out, bring some friends next week. It's going to be a very special service for Thanksgiving next weekend. Also, just want to highlight the golf tournament and and uh, um, just uh, encourage you guys. Uh, Dave said, hey, would you remind everybody that that the golf tournament's coming up. It's just a couple weekends away. Dave will give you some more information about it, but um, I think the money's due like next week too. So it's always a great golf tournament. You want to be a part of a fun, good golf tournament next, uh, talk to Dave. He'll get you plugged into that. It's going to be a good time. And then also too, um, for Operation Christmas, um, uh, child, I think the boxes are due this morning, so um, um, let's get those boxes turned in and get those sent all around the nation. It's a privilege to, to bless people around the world. All right. So we're continuing our message series, Forgotten Virtues, this morning. Let's do that. So it's interesting, like, how you would perceive the world we live in today and the values that the world lives with today. There's an interesting passage of scripture that describes life in the um, um, uh, last days, it says, and it describes the, the lifestyle during that time. And some have said, hey, this kind of sounds like uh, culture in the world we live in today. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, it describes it this way. Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, 
brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lo lovers of God. Some have said that sounds like uh, um, what the world that, that we're living in today, that, that the Bible looks forward and, and, and describes that, that time period. And it's why in this series, Forgotten Virtues, we're talking about being the difference. We're talking about integrity. We're talking about honor. We're talking about loyalty. We're talking about gratitude. We're talking about perseverance, virtues that, that have been forgotten, that you and I can, can rediscover together. And we're learning these things from the pages of the Bible as we, as we discover treasure um, and we discover some forgotten virtues, which next week, as I talk to you uh, uh, um, about not having a sense of entitlement, because... I don't even think we understand how much it impacts day-to-day -day life when we live entitled. And I'm going to describe that next week because what I've discovered about you and I truly being thankful, you and I truly being grateful, is that we can say, I'm going to be grateful. But what will happen is entitlement will actually suck the thanksgiving out of us. And so we're going to discover that we have to let go of entitlement in order to truly embrace gratitude. It's going to be a really cool week next week. I hope you'll, you'll be with it. I'm so excited about that service. Today I want to talk with you about the forgotten virtue of loyalty. And I just want to ask, um, how many of you guys, like by, by show of hands today, and we'll just kind of do a show of hands. How many of you guys would say, yeah, you know what, Pastor Ben? I'm a loyal person. Come on, just, just let's, let's answer that question. I'm, I'm a loyal person, all right? And my hand is up, and, and, uh, and so, okay. So, so we would say, hey, a majority of us here are kind of saying, yeah, you know what? I, I, this, the loyalty thing, I think I'm a loyal person. But when, in the reality of what, something we're going to learn today, there are so many moments, in all honesty, there are so many many moments in our lives where we're not loyal. And God is going to open our eyes to that about ourselves today. So let me give you a few thoughts on loyalty. The first is this. Disloyalty is really, really difficult to see in ourselves. It really is. Like to look in the mirror and actually see ways that we don't demonstrate loyalty is really tough for us to see. Sometimes we have to have somebody else help us. Or sometimes we have to have the Bible or God kind of look back at us and show us uh, um, in answering that question, am I truly a, a loyal person in, to, in order to answer that question? And I want to give you an example because I've always considered myself a really, really loyal guy. And, and there was a moment back in, in one of my friends from high school named Brandon and and I told you a story a few weeks ago about um, hanging out with him. And there's another one today. There was a moment where we're outside playing basketball in front of my house in Maryville. And, and up comes a car that, that pulls up. And, and, and um, they ask us, yeah, like, hey, do you know where the road in Canto is? And we responded out, yeah, um, yeah, you just you go down around here, take a right, second right. There's, there's, there's in Canto um, that, that's over there. We answered the question. They're like, well, there's two girls, two girls that are driving, young, young girls, and, and they're like, so can you show us how to get there? We don't know how to get there. And can you just show us? And foolishly, we, Brandon and I was like, all right, we'll just go show them real quick. Just a couple blocks down, you know, we'll just go show them real quick. Foolishly, we get in the car, and we're going to help them, help them find this place. Well, what we didn't know at the time was one, the car was stolen, and two, the, uh, both girls were actually 14 years old. And one of them, uh, the one that's driving, like, like did, thought she was hitting the brake, but she hit the gas. And all of a sudden, we're doing this small little tiny street at like 40, 45, I don't know how fast we're going, we're going fast. And then she tries to take a turn. And we're going way too fast to take a turn. To which 
She slams through the front of a chain link fence. We go right through it, and we go right into somebody's living room. Smacking into their house, into the living room. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, but we like really did a lot of damage to this house. And the police come. I am, I am so terrified in this moment. I am so scared in this moment. The very first thing when the police officer came to me, I said this. It was his idea. <laughs> Threw him under the bus. And I'm a loyal person. I'm a loyal friend. It was his idea. Fortunately, you know, the, we just got in the car. We were helping him find direction. So we got it out and that went okay. But we actually see this example of, of in Scripture of how we think that we're really, really loyal, but... When pressure is applied, we find out where we're not quite as loyal as we think we are. And Peter is the perfect example, because Peter goes to Jesus, and he says, Jesus, I've got your back. Jesus, if any one of these losers chooses to disown you, I will be your loyal God. I will never deny you, Jesus. I'll be perfectly loyal to you. Jesus responds before the rooster, rooster crows three, three times. You'll disown me three times. We see it in Matthew 26. It says this. Peter replied, if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And even if, and as you know the rest of the story, as the story unfolds, we see Peter, that, that three times people come up to him and ask him, one is like a, a, a young girl, and he doesn't have enough courage to respond, hey, you're the guy, like you were with the guy that's getting crucified, the guy, the guy that's getting like uh, flogged right now, you were with him. No, no, I, I, man, that guy, I don't even know who is Jesus. Three times, the rooster crows, and and you, you hear the sound of the, of the rooster, and Peter's paralyzed in the moment, and he realizes. My, my, my. Three times I said I would not turn away. I would be perfectly loyal. But I wasn't loyal. And Peter's response right now is going to be really, really huge because we're going to learn something about our response at the end of my message today. Peter's response to this as he had... Um, turned away um, and, and rejected Christ, we see his response in chapter 26 and verse 75. He went outside and wept bitterly. He went outside and wept bitterly. He responded with true repentance. And we'll figure out what that means at the end of my message. That's why number two, the second thing we learn about loyalty is this. True loyalty is proven and not proclaimed. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 6, the world's wisest man said, Many will say that they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? Who can find one that's truly reliable? Many will say, hey, I'm loyal but when put to the test, they aren't truly reliable. We've got to learn as followers of Jesus not just to talk the talk. We've got to learn to walk the walk. And a really cool story that, that I read this week that's a great example in sports history uh, about loyalty is the story of Pete Wee Reese and Jackie Robinson. Back in 1947, they both played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. 
and very, very good friends. And what makes this story meaningful is Jackie Robinson was the first black, he was the first African American baseball player. And he broke color and racial barriers in order to be the first one to play basketball. And in a very significant deal and in, in, in moment, his, his teammates would actually turn against him. We were playing uh, a, a game against Cincinnati, and Jackie Robinson was playing second base, and his friend Pee Wee Reese was playing shortstop, and the crowd started throwing things at Jackie Robinson. The, the crowd started mocking him and, 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 and throwing things out on the field and jeering and taunting against him as an African-American baseball player. Booing. Jackie Robinson was receiving death threats. His teammates were turning against him. And in this moment, Pee Wee Reese said, you know what? I'm gonna have nothing more of this. And as a loyal friend, he takes his baseball glove, he throws his baseball glove on the ground, he walks over to Jackie Robinson, and he simply places his arm around him like this. Immediately the stadium fell silent. And they look back at that moment as Pee Wee Reese affirmed Jackie Robinson and put his arm around him and said, enough is enough. Jackie Robinson, after that moment, said, not only did he save my career, I believe that Pee Wee Reese saved my life. And it's a special moment in history where they actually built a statue to symbolize the loyalty of two friends and how much you can accomplish together when you have loyalty. Loyalty is proven. It is not just proclaimed. And I want to show you in the Bible in a really cool story about loyalty. There's a story between a soldier and a commander and 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 king. And, and so the story is this king David had a son, Absalom. It was his third son. And his son committed a horrible crime, ending up murdering a guy. And Absalom ran out of the area for his life. And he was very uh, afraid, even though King David remained very, very faithful, very, very loyal to his son, Absalom. Well, there would come a moment three years later where Absalom began to lead a revolt and, and he started to win the affection of some of the armies of Israel with the plan of how he was actually going to um, um, kill David. And, and, and David is actually in a very, very critical moment with Absalom's plan to take his life but there was a commander by the name of Ittai that showed up on the scene. Basically, he was a mercenary. He was a, he was a hired uh, um, a military force, a, a hired guy who was the commander of 600 men. And Ittai, he really had no skin in this game. Like, like, he really had no reason to get himself involved in order to help David. And that's where we pick up the story when the Bible says this. The king said to Ittai the Gittite, why should you come along with us? In other words, David looks back at this guy Ittai and says, you know what? You know, this has like no real impact to you. So why don't you just play it safe? Why don't you just, why don't you just go home? And, and we see that unfold. He goes on to say, you're a foreigner in exile from your homeland. You came only yesterday. Go back and take your countrymen. May kindness and faithfulness be with you. But Ittai replied to the king, as surely as the Lord lives, and as my Lord the king lives, wherever my Lord the king may be, whether it means life or death, there will your servant 
be. So he proclaims loyalty, but you actually read the story unfold, and it Ty does exactly what he says. Whether in life or death, he stands by King David as a, 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 a loyal friend, and he is the exact guy David needed in order to overcome this revolt. Later on, David would actually promote him to being in charge of one third of the armies of Israel because he embodied loyalty. <laughs> he had it inside of him. And he said, because you are loyal, I will put you in charge of one third of the troops. And this wonderful example of loyalty, the forgotten virtue in the pages of scripture. Now, I want to get really, really practical with you today about some ways that you and I can, uh, that, that our loyalty will be tested. And, and ways that, that, that in our day-to-day -day lives, you and I can have a loyalty in relationship to God, in relationship to people. And, and we're going to learn about some opportunities for loyalty. And the first is this. You and I have and for those of you that, that are married, you and I have the opportunity for loyalty to your spouse. Malachi chapter 2 verses 15 and 16 says this. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? So guard your heart and remain what? Loyal, Loyal to the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty. So guard your heart and do not be unfaithful to your wife. And Malachi reminds us that, that God is present when we say our vows and that he unites us together as one. And we live as one. And we have an opportunity to demonstrate loyalty to our spouse. I read a statistic that over 67% of people today are unfaithful to their spouse. But everyone is loyal, right? We're all loyal. And it's just interesting. And what I'm going to do today to help us with the message today is I want to do a comparison contrast of what might be an expression, an attitude of the world we live in today, or an expression or an attitude of Satan, the prince of the power of the air. He's like, he's like reigning over planet Earth, and, and, and he's influencing over planet Earth, and, and, and trying to do damage and bring deceit, and he's working. And we also have the flesh. We have our own flesh that tries to lie to us about the right thing to do. So I'm going to do a comparison contrast of what the world might say, or, or the enemy of our soul, or our own flesh, and along with what God's Word says when it comes to us living a life of loyalty in expression to um, um, opportunities for loyalty in our life. And so the world might say to you, if your wife gives you or your husband gives you a hard time, then go ahead and, and be unfaithful. Go ahead and, and, and you, you don't have to be loyal. Like, like if, if they give you a hard time, just drop them, move on. And God would say, be loyal. The world would say, hey, go ahead and look lustfully at other people, whether online or you start at the gym and you see somebody or at work and you see somebody and you find identify them to be um, uh, attractive. So go ahead and, and, and think lustful thoughts. Go ahead and, 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 and continue down that path and, and, and gawk at those people. People think lustful thoughts about them. Better yet, get together with them. And, 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 yeah, I won't even say it. But God says, remain loyal to the wife of your youth. Guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful. The world would say to you and I, put everything else ahead of your marriage. 
Put your career ahead of your marriage. Put your hobbies in front of your marriage. Put sports in front of your marriage. Put um, everything in front of your marriage. So that, that your relationship with your spouse is crowded out. To which the Bible would say no. No, your, your, your spouse goes ahead of, of, of all of those other things. And so you and I can actually live committed, remembering the covenant of oneness, remembering the vows we have said one to another, and you and I can choose to be loyal to your spouse. The very practical expression of how our loyalty is tested. And you and I can choose to live lives of loyalty or disloyalty. There's another practical expression of being loyal, and that is to your friends. The Bible says this, the world's wisest man in Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of need. It's interesting to see the attitude of, of the world, the flesh, the sin nature, Satan, when it comes to friendship. And the world might say to you, hey, go ahead and gossip about your friends. They gossip about you. Go ahead and say bad things about them when they aren't around. Tear them down. And God would respond and say, no, you're different. Build one another up. Edify one another. The world would say, hey, it's not your job to tell a friend that they're headed in the wrong direction. It's not your place to get involved and, and, and tell somebody that they're on the wrong path. They're making some really bad choices that will lead to some really bad consequences. And if they're, you know, even if they're Jesus followers and they're not, you know, they're, they're developing some real sinful addictions in their life, like, it's not your job to tell them the truth. The Bible would say to us in friendships, it would say to us to speak the truth in love. To speak the truth in love. And God would say love people enough to stand in somebody's way to say, hey, I'm not going to allow you to destroy yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's love that does that. You know, that's what Jesus did for us. He stood in the path of humanity and says, you know what? I'm not going to allow you to destroy yourself. And Jesus said, I'm going to have a plan to, to, to save you. And you and I as friends can help one another and, and, and stand in the way of people destroying themselves. The world would say, hey, you know what? When, when somebody's in a time of need, you know what? They're on their own. Because I'm concerned about me, myself, and I. So, so when a friend is in a real time of need, you know what? I don't, I don't need to get involved at that point. Whereas the Bible would say to us, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Mm -hmm. That we have the opportunity to help in a, a time of need. And here's a hot button in today's world. The world would say when a friend turns against you, when a friend hurts you, write them off. They just gave themselves a one-way ticket out of my life. When they hurt me, when they wronged me, when they disagreed with me. And you know what? The Bible absolutely encourages the ministry of reconciliation where you and I would say, you know what? I'm going to choose to forgive you and I'm going to try to work things out because that's what loyalty and that's what forgiveness does. And you and I respond in that way and we're loyal in Friendships. There's practical expressions of loyalty in, in relationships and friendships. And, and there's a third area that we can really see our loyalty, and that's to Christ's church. That's to the body of Christ. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. 
all the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and good, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. And so we can do a comparison contrast of what the world might say about being loyal to the, the body of Christ, Jesus' church. And the world might say these early Jesus followers were fanatics. They were fanatics. They were attending and devoting themselves to church. They were selling their stuff to be able to help somebody else with their stuff. And they were demonstrating that type of generosity with people in the fellowship. That's fanatical. They were attending church nearly every day. That's fanatical. It's unrealistic. The, the world might say it this way. That, that we don't have time to really be part of a church. So um, heavily involved in church. So what we got to do is. Like, we'll sprinkle a little bit of Jesus into our lives, uh, not so much that would make us different or weird or anything like that. I don't have time to be involved in church. I don't have time to serve. I don't have money to give. I don't, the world says, yeah, like, I want to go to a church like, that meets my needs and makes me feel good about myself. And, and, and it's going to be about me. And, and that, that's going to be my focus. And, you know, I never want to hear about the reality of sin or judgment or hell or things in God's word that, 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 that are true. But I just want to feel good about myself. And, and, and as soon as the church doesn't meet expectation, you know what? I'm going to go find another church and then another church and then another church. And, 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 and on and on and on. And. And, and we continue that, down that road of consumerism. And, and hey, God and church exist to make me happy. Instead of us understanding loyalty, a loyalty to Jesus church. And let me just say, after saying what I said, there's, there's a healthy way um, to, to leave a church. There's a healthy way to still be loyal and, 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 and move to another um, um, church setting in your life. There's a, there's a way to accomplish that and, and, and do that right. Yes. But in the moment consumer, we're, when we're called to that, what, when the moment consumerism happens and, and, and takes over and it's always all about us and we're just trying to make ourselves happy in every setting of our lives, then that becomes a problem. And God says in response to that, he says this, be devoted to me in my word. Be devoted to the teaching of the Bible. Be devoted to one another. God says be generous. God says uh, help one another. Bear one another's burdens. God says give your first tenth to me in the tithe. God says to a servant in the body. God says be loyal to my church. Now with all of that being said, as we examine those areas and opportunities that you and I for have for loyalty or disloyalty um, in, in, in our life, we, we have to realize something that's very difficult to see in the mirror. Because we all acknowledge that disloyalty is a problem in culture today most of the time. We think it's a message for somebody else and not for me. And I just want to really be honest and real with you today and just confess to you today that I identify times and moments in my life where I really struggle with being loyal. And there are moments that the Bible talks about the, the what is worship and, and living in relationship with God? The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, right? That that's a picture of loving God with everything. And what does God want? God wants all of our heart, right? And so there's many moments in my life where I, where I find myself struggling with giving God all of my heart. And where does disloyalty come from? 
In the moment that we struggle with it, why is it so hard to find in today's world? Here's why. Disloyalty is born out of a divided heart. God wants an undivided heart from us. That we love him with everything that is inside of us. And there are moments in my life where I have to acknowledge and I have to be honest with myself. And I have to say there's things, there's things that I struggle, I wrestle with in moments or seasons of my life where my heart will grab after, start to long for things of the world. And I have to say, no, I'm not gonna allow my heart to go after those other things. And I think we might all struggle at times and seasons with that moment. And the Bible says like we should, we should really give them our attention. And Peter's response was, Peter went out and wept bitterly. He repented. And the Bible says this, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your what? Loyalty is divided between God and the world. And what does he say next? Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. And the Bible is saying to us, Don't take sin for granted. Don't take, in the world that we live in, where where we we see like how, you know, the the world's attitude towards sin, the world's attitude towards towards that we should come to Christ and, and we should repent. The Bible says repentance is a 180 degree turn. That we're headed one direction and then we're headed in another direction. And we take our heart and we say, God, there's too many moments I'm making it about me. And I want to repent. And I want to make it about you. And we just come to that moment that Peter had. Because we all kind of give Peter a hard time, right? Like Peter's that guy in the Bible. And we go, Peter, man, you could never get it right. Well, you know what? He's a picture of us. And we have to be honest with ourselves. And we have to say, God, forgive me. I repent, I turn for so many times, making it about me. And in the critical moment, I want to be loyal. In the critical moment, I want to be right with you. And we come and we say, cleanse me, change me, heal me. And we allow that with the help of the power of God through his Holy Spirit, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, that we give to him a divided heart. And he gives us back not a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh, a heart that's alive and and, and it feels again. And and our heart is whole and and our heart is undivided. And that's the way that that you and I can set ourselves to live our lives in the future. Will we struggle again? Maybe, probably. But again, living in relationship to Jesus requires massive doses of forgiveness. But you cannot take sin for granted. It destroys. And you and I come and say, God, give me an undivided heart. I want to be 100% totally, completely for you and loyal to you. Would you stand with me? God, I just thank you so much for your word. And God, your word is challenging during seasons, Lord, uh, moments of our life. And I just believe today that there might be some that are struggling today. And, And there have been moments and seasons of my life where I have struggled with loyalty, Jesus. And and 
in those moments, in those seasons, we just find that our heart is divided. And, and God, you desire that, that we have love, live our lives loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. And God, we don't want to take sin for granted. We don't, Lord Jesus, we come to you in this moment. And, and God, may we respond as Peter responded that there's true deep repentance in us. And that happens when we have a healthy respect for sin. It happens when we live our lives that, that, that we truly see the way of the world, the way of the flesh, the way of the sin nature, the way it lies to us. and brings us back to that place of being divided and, and try, to, try to be like loyal to God, but have all of the world in our heart as well. And it just doesn't work. Is God, you said, and Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve. It's, it's one or the other. So, Lord, we just have to come and, and, and say, we want to serve you and you alone. And, God, we just pray, Lord Jesus, that we would, we pray, God, cleanse me. God, heal me. God, restore me. God, allow me to be loyal to you. I just wonder how many of you guys would say, you know, Pastor Ben, I, I struggle with moments where I'm not completely loyal, that, I'm, that, I'm undivided, that, that, that I have a divided heart. There are those moments or seasons where I have a divided heart. But right now, I just surrender, commit myself to, to have a heart that's whole today and just to say to Jesus, I want to give you everything. And if that's you to say yes, I want to give Jesus everything. Just raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three, go. God, we just come before you to give us an undivided heart. Give us a purity, God, about our lives, a wholeness about our lives, a heart that is undivided, that loves the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and everything that's in Help us to do that. Help us to live that way. Purify our hearts today. Purify us today. Because we want to live a life in loyalty to you. In loyalty to our spouse. In loyalty to our friends. And in loyalty to your church. To Jesus' church. We love you and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hey, thanks for gathering with us today, Discovery. I love you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next week for Thanksgiving Sunday or on Thursday night, group night, right here at Discovery.